So this lesson is a continuation on quadratic function applications. Um, so we're going to be using quadratic word problems that deal with area and consecutive integers. So it says a square room with side length x is going to be expanded by 5 feet on each side. What is the equation of the area of the new room? Okay, so area is the key word here. Formula for area of a square is length times width. Always start by drawing a picture. I have a square room. The side length of it is x. Well, if this side is x, then this side is also x. But what are we going to do to this room? We're going to expand it. That means make it bigger by 5 feet on each side. So instead of x, this is going to become x plus 5. And so is this. So now I want the equations. I'm not solving for anything. I just want the equation of the area of the new room. Well, if area equals length times width, then that'd be x plus 5 times x plus 5. So then all I have to do is foil or lobster and then combine my like terms and then very carefully pick my answer. So, so far so good. Not that difficult. I highly recommend drawing a picture. The length of a rectangular area rug in a room is 5 feet longer than the width W. Okay, let's stop right there. We now have a rectangle. Now, obviously, one side is longer than the other. And it says the length is 5 feet longer than the width. Well, if this is my width, then this side right here is 5 feet longer than my width. So W plus 5. So this is my width, this is my length, and my length is 5 feet more than the width. Okay, so that's the original rug. But the owner wants to get a new rug that's 2 feet longer on each side. So what am I going to do to each side? I'm going to add 2. So this is going to become W plus 2. And if I add 2 to this one, this is going to become W plus 7. And I want the equation of the area. So I'm going to do W plus 2 times W plus 7. W squared plus 7W plus 2W plus 14. So W squared plus 9W plus 14. And then very carefully pick your answer. <clears throat> the length of a rectangular garden is 3 times the width. Okay, let's stop right there. I've got a rectangular garden. The length is 3 times the width. So if this is my width, my length is 3 times the width. Okay. Farmer Robbins will increase both the length and the width by 5 feet. So we're going to increase him by 5 feet. And we're going to increase him by 5 feet. I want the new equation for the area. So W plus 5 times 3W plus 5. So 3W squared plus 5W plus 15W plus 25. 3W squared plus 20W plus 25. Uh, C. All right, got a rectangular garden, four feet wide and six feet long. 
four feet wide, six feet long. Each dimension is increased by X feet. Increased by means add. So I'm going to add X to both sides. But instead of putting 4 plus X, I'm going to go X plus 4 just because in my mind the X should come first. And we're going to increase this one by X, so X plus 6. And I want new area. Let's go X plus 4 times X plus 6. So D. The length of a rectangular garden is 4 more than the width. If the area is 60, find the width. Okay, now this one's different because this one's not just asking for an equation. This wants us to actually find the width. So we're actually going to set something up and solve it. Okay, so we have a rectangular garden. The length, that's the long part, is 4 more than the width. So width plus 4. And he's my width. But then check this out. It tells me that the area is 60. Okay. Well, area is length times width. But now I know that that equals 60. Okay. Well, if you distribute. All right. Now, stop and think. This is quadratic because we have something squared. To solve something that's quadratic, first we need to get it equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to subtract the 60 and set him equal to 0. And then I'm going to factor him. Well, there's no GCF, but this is a really cute trinomial. Um, factors of 60 that subtract to give you 4. Well, I don't know the factors of 60, just off the top of my head. 2 and 30, 3 and 20, 4 and 15, that doesn't work, 5 and something, 5 and 12, 6 and 10, 7 doesn't go, 8 doesn't go, 9, back to 10. And I want the pair that subtracts to give me 4, bingo, 6 and 10. So again, I'm still using those factoring techniques that we talked about when we learned factoring. If it doesn't just automatically knock you upside the head, just go list your factors, um, and then they're right there in front of you. Signs are different. Bigger numbers, positive. Positive on my 10, negative on my 6. And then if I solve these, that's going to give me W equals 6, and W equals negative 10. Well, guys, W stands for width. It can't be negative. So this answer does not make sense. So my width is 6. Now, that's my answer because it says find the width. But what's one way that they could trick you in asking the question? You've solved for width. What they could have asked you is to find the length. If that's the case, I wouldn't have changed anything about what I've done. But at the very end, I would say, okay, W equals 6. Well, my length is W plus 4. So 6 plus 4 is 10. So my length is 10. And that would have been my answer. So again, and we've talked about this all semester, is be super careful and always go back and read, 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 read the question and make sure you've answered the question. It would really suck if you did all this work right, but just forgot to answer the question. So make sure you read and make sure what you've got answers the question. Okay, so just to recap, we drew our picture, we drew the rectangular garden, we found, it told us what the area was, we set it equal to 60, we distributed, we subtracted our 60 over, we factored it, and we solved it. So everything from here down is old stuff. It's just getting this that's the new step for today. The rectangle below has an area of 63 square feet. What is the width? of the rectangle to the nearest foot, the width. Okay, so let's see. I've got x plus 5 times x plus 3, and it told me what my area was, 63. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. 
So x squared plus 8x. Okay. <clears throat> so I've cleaned it up. So now the problem is, is that he's not equal to 0. So I need to subtract my 63 over. And I can combine him with my 15. It's going to be a negative 48. And then this no GCF, so it's a very nice trinomial. Let's see, 48. 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12. I'm trying to get the ones that subtract to give me 8. 4 and 12. Signs are different. Bigger numbers positive. So x would equal a 4 and x would equal a negative 12. I can't have a negative because we're talking about a length. So that's 4. Okay, so now what's 4? x is 4. What well, says what is the width? Well, the width is x plus 3. And I guarantee you if this was multiple choice, choice A would be x equals 4. But I haven't found the width yet. I've just found x. If x is 4, then what's my width? My width is 7. So again, it's another great example of making sure that you read the question. The length of a rectangle is 2 times its width. The area of the rectangle is 72 square inches. What is the length? Okay, I'm going to circle the length. Okay, so I'm going to draw. The length of a rectangle is 2 times its width. 2 times its width. And there's my width. Area is 72. So length times width equals 72. Okay, now this is not a lobster. This is not a foil. This is just W times 2W. That's 2W squared. So don't think of it. This Don't think of this 2 and this W as two separate terms. This is just a 2W. W times 2W is 2W squared. But make sure you see that difference. Okay, he is quadratic because he has something squared. So I'm going to get him equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract the 72 over. This is not a lovely trinomial. This is a GCF. Um, I can't take any W's out, but I can take a 2 out. If I take a 2, um, and then I got squares. Um, set all the parts equal to 0. He has no W's in him. He's going to give me a negative 6, and he's going to give me a positive 6. I don't want the negative. So W is 6, and again, I'm sure that would be choice A, but we're going to go back and read. It says, what is the length? Well, we found W. W stands for width. So my width is 6. Well, my length is 2 times the width, so my length is 12. Again, make sure you answer the question. Okay, so now we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to go back to this consecutive even and odd stuff that we talked about, gosh, way back in Unit 1. Um, so consecutive integers. If my first integer is x, if we are consecutive, that means in a row. So my next one's going to be x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, and I could go on forever. If I'm even, then even numbers are two digits apart. So if my first one's x, my next one's going to be x plus 2, then x plus 4, and x plus 6, and I could go on forever. And this is the one that normally gets people because they think odd, they think they need to add 1, 3, 5. But odd numbers are still two digits apart. If you look at odd numbers, they are still going up by 2. So if my first one's x, my next one's still x plus 2, x plus 4 x plus 6, and so on. Um, so they still increase by 2. Okay, so that's all review. So now let's see what we're going to do with this. The product. What does product mean? It means multiply. Of two consecutive Negative. Now, negative is not on my chart. That's not an even or odd thing. That's just saying, hey, my answer should be negative. 
integers is 56. So I only have two integers, and they're not even or odd. They're normal. Product means multiply. So I'm going to take my two numbers, and I'm going to multiply them together, and it should give me 56. Okay. Well, distribute. He is quadratic. Get him equal to zero. Trinomial. Factors of 56 that subtract to give me 1 or 7 and 8. Signs are different. Bigger numbers positive. So it gives me x equals 7 and x equals negative 8. Now I have two answers here. I only need one of them. How do I know which one I want? Well, it tells me that they're supposed to be negative. So he's out. I want the negative one. So my first one is negative 8. Well, what's negative 8 plus 1? Negative 7. The product, again, multiply, of two consecutive positive odd integers is 99. So I have an x, and I have an x plus 2, because we're odd. That have anything to do with being positive, it's the fact that we're odd. So x times x plus 2 times, because it said product, equals 99. A little distributing. Quadratic, so I'm going to get them equal to zero. Trinomial. I need the factors of 99 that subtract to give me two. Well, the ones, the factors of 99 that stick out to me are 9 times 11, and that subtracts to give you two. Signs different, bigger number positive. So x will equal a 9 and a negative 11. Now I want positive. I don't want him. I'm going to go with 9. And then 9 plus 2 gives me a positive 11. Oh, let's read the question. Let me practice what I pe preach. It says find the largest. So the answer is really just the 11. So you couldn't give me both answers there because it's just asking for the largest. So again, another great example of making sure you read the question. Okay, now this says find the smallest, that's important, two consecutive even, okay, so I've got an x and an x plus 2, okay, the square of the smaller, and then there's my favorite word is, and that means equal, so we're going to stop right there, the square of the smaller, well, who's smaller, x or x plus 2, that's x, but I want to square him, okay, is... 10 more than the larger number. Okay, so let's do that again. The square of the smaller, so there's my smaller number, and I square him, is 10 more than, so 10 more than, the larger number, which is that guy. So that's why he went there. Okay, well, he is quadratic, and you remember us talking about this x squared term. This is sort of like the queen bee, and we want to keep her happy, keep her positive. So I'm going to move everybody over to her. So I'm going to have x squared minus x minus 2 minus 10. So I just moved everybody over there. Well, I can combine my negative 2 and my negative 10. And you could have combined this and made this a positive 12 and then subtracted it over. You're all going to end up at the same place. It's all good. And this is a very nice trinomial. Factors of 12 subtract to 1 or 4 and 3. Signs different. Bigger number negative. So that's going to give me x equals 4 and x equals negative 3. Okay, now hold on. Let's go back. Find the smallest of two consecutive even. Okay, well, if I'm even, I can't be a negative 3. So I'm a 4. So he's a 4, and he's a 6. Now, who does it want? Find the smallest. So it wants the 4. So again, don't get overwhelmed by the words. Just take your time and translate it, just like it was a foreign language. Just take your time and write it out. Find the three consecutive positive integers. 
Okay, so nobody's even, nobody's odd. So we're x, x plus 1, x plus 2. Such that 4 times the sum, sum means adds. I'm going to add stuff together. 4 times the sum of all 3, and then there's my word is. I'm going to stop right there. The sum of all 3. So I'm going to 4 times x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 is 2 times product, product means multiply, the larger 2. So I'm going to take these 2 and I need to multiply. Good gracious, this thing is big. Okay, so let's, let's walk through that one more time. 4 times the sum. Sum means add. So this is me adding first term, second term, third term. So 4 times the sum of all three terms is 2 times the product, product means multiply, the larger 2. So I took these 2 and I'm multiplying them together. Okay, so first I'm going to start inside my parentheses. So x plus x plus x is 3x. And 1 plus 2 is 3. And then I can distribute my 4. 12x plus 12. Well, that's not bad. Okay, let's come over here. Don't distribute your 2 yet. Lobster, what's in here? So x squared plus 2x plus 1x plus 2 x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now I'm going to distribute my 2. 2x squared plus 6x plus 4. Okay, um, is he quadratic? Yes, he is quadratic because we have something squared. So because we have something squared, I need to get it equal to zero. Now remember, your squared term is your queen bee, and we want to keep her happy and positive. Well, she's happy and positive right there. So we are going to move both of these guys over to her. Zero equals 2x squared. Now these are like terms, so minus 6x minus 8. Now, it's very cute. Uh, not a trinomial yet. We're going to GCF a 2. And then we're going to do a trinomial. Signs are different. Bigger numbers negative. Uh, 2 equals 0 is going to get marked out. That's going to give me a 4, and that's going to give me a negative 1. All right, let's go back and let's read says that they are positive. So he's out. So x is 4 plus 1 would be 5 plus 2 would be 6 and it says find 3 of them. So there's all 3. Now that's a doozy of a problem. But it's not at all beyond what you're capable of, of, of doing. We've gone over every single one of these individual topics separately and now this kind of puts it all together. So this is a great problem because it hits like six concepts in one problem. So take your time, go back and, and redo this problem on your own. Go back and listen to it over and over and over again. Um, the setup, I mean if you screw up your setup, you're toast. So slow down, get your setup right. Don't make stuff up. Read the words. Write down what the words are telling you to do. Okay, last one. What is the largest, that's important, of three consecutive positive integers? So is anybody even or odd? No, we're just positive. And there are three of us. Okay. Product, that means multiply, so I'm going to multiply somebody. The smaller two integers, and then there's my is, so I'm stopping. The product of the smaller two, well, that's these two. So x times x plus 1. Product means multiply. Is 28 less than the third integer squared. Well, there's my third one. 
squared. Okay. All right, let's distribute here. That's not bad. Now, what is it when you have something in parentheses squared? Do you just square everybody? No, you have to write it twice. So I'm going to come over here to the side, and I'm going to go x plus 2 times x plus 2, and I'm going to lobster. Okay, so now this goes up there. So x squared plus 4, x plus 4. Minus 28. Um, I'm going to clean up those two terms. So x squared plus x equals x squared plus 4x minus 24. Okay, so now let's talk. Is this problem quadratic? Yes, it is currently quadratic. Okay, so this is when we would say, all right, where's the queen bee? Well, I have two of them. I have an x squared on the left-hand side, and I have an x squared on the right-hand side. So we need to get them together. What's going to happen? Whichever one you move, what's going to happen? They're going to cancel each other out. So let's say I want to move this guy. So I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. Well, he cancels because I moved him. But what happens when you do 1x squared minus 1x squared? They cancel also. So now let's write what we have. I have x equals... 4x minus 24. Are you quadratic anymore? No. So don't get this equal to zero. Guys, this is like sixth grade solving an equation now. This is not quadratic. This is just regular, hey, get all your x's on one side, get all your numbers on the other, and solve for x. Don't move everybody to the same side. We're not quadratic anymore. So I'm going to subtract my 4x. To get my x's on the same side, that's a 1, so that's a negative 3x equals a negative 24. Divide by negative 3, x equals 8. Okay, so if x equals 8, he's 9, he's 10, I want the largest, 10. So the moral of this problem is, don't get so comfortable with everything being quadratic, that you just assume that every problem is going to be quadratic. You've still got solving linear equations up your sleeve that you've done for years, so just don't always count those out. These last couple problems are, are tough, I think, so you know, feel free to go back and uh, rewind and backtrack and watch them again and practice them. Uh, until you're super, super comfortable with them. But it's not like, oh, these are difficult. She'll never give us one of these. That's not true. You are capable of doing these problems. Um, so make sure that you are comfortable with them.